Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of the Pope St. Paul VI. And in this Mass, we pray that like him, we may also be filled with the wisdom of God in order to bring about renewal in society, in the Church, in our families, and in our own lives. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made blessed Paul VI the vicar of Peter and committed to him the care of the universal church, by his intercession, keep your beloved flock ever safe, so that with integrity of faith and perfect charity, your church may journey to her heavenly homeland through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the book of Sirach. I thank the Lord and I praise Him. I bless the name of the Lord. When I was young and innocent, I sought wisdom openly in my prayer. I prayed for her before the temple, and I will seek her until the end. And she flourished as a grape soon ripe. My heart delighted in her. My feet kept to the level path because from earliest youth, I was familiar with her. In the short time I paid heed, I met with great instruction. Since in this way I have profited, I will give my teacher grateful praise. I became resolutely devoted to her, the good I persistently strove for. My soul was tormented in seeking her. My hand opened her gate, and I came to know her secrets. I directed my soul to her, and in cleanness, I attained to her. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples returned once more to Jerusalem. As he was walking in the temple area, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders approached him and said to him, by what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I shall ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was John's baptism of heavenly or of human origin? Answer me. They discussed this among themselves and said, If we say of heavenly origin, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But shall we say of human origin, They fear the crowd, for they all thought John was really a prophet. So they said to Jesus in reply, We do not know. Then Jesus said to them, Neither shall I tell you by what authority 
I do these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, our Gospel today is a continuation of our Gospel yesterday when Jesus went to the Temple of Jerusalem and he was displeased by what he saw. The temple was turned into a marketplace. And so out of anger, Jesus drove out the people engaging in business. He overturned their tables. And in our gospel today, the leaders of the temple the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders ask Jesus, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you the right to do these things? Ano ang karapatan mo na magtaboy ng mga tao mula dito sa templo? This is a very tricky question. Because if Jesus said the authority came from God, God gave me the authority to do these things, then the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders will have a proof of their accusation of blasphemy against Jesus. If Jesus said, by my own authority, I do this because of my own authority, then they will think that he is a fool, all the more that they will not believe him. Sa'yo lang palang kapangyarihan ng gagaling, e paano kaming maniniwala sa'yo? The chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people we're trying to put Jesus in a very difficult and compromising situation. Gusto nilang ipitin si Jesus. Inilalagay nila si Jesus sa alanganin. How did Jesus answer their question? Jesus answered their question by posing a question. Jesus said, answer my question first, and then I will answer your question. And the question of Jesus was something about John the Baptist. He asked them, what was John's baptism of heavenly or human origin? Was John's baptism divine? or merely a human initiative? This is also a tricky question from Jesus. Because if the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes would say, John's baptism is of divine origin, then Jesus will ask them, then why did you not believe John? Why did you not follow John? If you did not believe John, whose baptism is of, or of divine origin, then you are not following God. If they answer of human origin, then the crowd will be displeased with them because the crowd considered John as a prophet. Jesus also placed them in a difficult and compromising situation. Gusto nilang ipitin si Jesus, sila ngayon ang naipit. Gusto nilang ilagay si Jesus sa alanganin, sila ngayon ang nalagay sa alanganin. 
My dear brothers and sisters, this conversation between Jesus and the scribes, the elders, and the chief priests show us that Jesus is filled with wisdom. The wisdom that our first reading talks about. The wisdom that comes from God. To be wise is not just to be intelligent. To be wise is not just to know many things. To be wise is to have the mind of God. To be wise is to think as God thinks. To be wise is to view reality, to, be, to view things around us with the eyes of God. That is true wisdom. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, many times we are also placed in a difficult, trying, and compromising situations. Nalalagay din tayo sa mga sitwasyon na parang naiipit tayo, nasa alanganin tayo, at hindi natin alam kung ano ang ating gagawin. There are times when we are also asked questions that we do not know how to answer. These are the times that we need wisdom. The wisdom that comes from God. And let us pray for wisdom because wisdom is a gift of God through the Holy Spirit. Our first reading tells us that wisdom is sought only in prayer. We cannot be wise simply by reading and studying. We can only be wise if God gives us wisdom. And so we have to seek wisdom through prayer. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate the memorial of Saint Pope Paul VI. He was our Pope from June of 1963 to August of 1978. And Pope Paul VI was the very first Pope to visit the Philippines in 1970. He was also the very first Pope to visit the Manila Cathedral. And during that visit in November of 1970, he came to the Manila Cathedral and celebrated Mass here. The very first Pope to celebrate Mass in the Manila Cathedral. That is why we are given with the privilege of having a secondary, a second-class relic of him, a cuff of his shirt. He does not have any first-class relics because his body was not exhumed according to his wishes. Pope Paul VI became Pope during a difficult period. His immediate predecessor, Saint Pope John XXIII, died eight months after he opened the Second Vatican Council in October of 1962. And when Pope Paul VI assumed the papacy, he was asked the question, will the Second Vatican Council continue? And he did continue it until the very end. And at the conclusion of the Second Vatican Council, to his shoulders was given the task of implementing the Second Vatican Council. And despite the many criticisms and objections to the Council, Pope Paul VI, inspired and guided by the wisdom of the Spirit of God, courageously followed 
the promptings of the Spirit manifested through the Second Vatican Council. He led the Church full of wisdom, leading the Church to where God wants the Church to go. My dear brothers and sisters, every day let us pray for wisdom. Let us ask the intercession of Mary, the seat of wisdom, so that God may give us the wisdom through the Holy Spirit. And, to, and this wisdom, this gift of wisdom, may always guide and enlighten us as we journey through life. Through the Gospel, Christ speaks to us with words of eternal authority and deed of healing power. Through Him, let us pray with confidence. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may continue to teach Christ's eternal truth with authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the hearts of world leaders may not be hardened as they hear Christ's voice today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those considering the religious life may seek to follow the will of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our blameless and holy lives may cast away the unclean spirits at work in our society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy the radiant dawn of eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Father all-powerful, we place before you our needs and pray confidently for your help and mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present on the feast day of blessed Paul VI may be for our good, since through its offering, you have loosed the offenses of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Paul VI, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Pope Paul VI, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the power of the gifts we have received, Lord God, on this feast day of blessed Pope Paul VI, fill us with its effects, both to sustain our mortal life and to gain us the joy of unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yeah.